In this lecture, we are going to look at different interpretation approaches. As you will see, these approaches are mainly based on the European Union law and after the Brexit, although there won't be further influence of the law, but a separate European jurisprudence has become part of the UK and, and has developed uh, over some period of time. So we can probably in the near future, the statutes will be interpreted along the same lines and this approach will still be relevant. This approach is widely used in European law and has overtaken the mischief rule to a large extent. It is sometimes similar to the mischief rule, however, purposive approach goes wider than mere ascertaining and considering the mischief. According to this rule, the judges look at the purpose of the enactment for which it was passed. Even this means distorting the plain meanings of the words. And that is something that is unique to the European Union law and changed the landscape of the interpretation of statutes in the UK. In practice, this approach is not limited to the interpretation of the European Union law and the judges take this approach in interpreting any piece of parliamentary enactment. It, it, it can be said that the purpose of approach is increasingly superseding the literal rule and the mischief rule as the appropriate approach to ascertain the will of the legislature. In the case of R against Secretary of State for the Environment, Transport and the Regions, Expert Spath Home Limited, Lord Nicholas of Birkenhead stated that nowadays the courts look at external aid for more than merely identifying the mischief the statute is intended to cure. In adopting a purposive approach to the interpretation of statutory language, courts seek to identify and give effect to the purpose of the legislation to the extent that extraneous material assists in identifying the purpose of the legislation. It's a useful tool. Lord Denning, in the case of Northam against London Borough of Barnet, referred to this approach that will promote the general legislative purpose underlying the provisions. Lord Scarman stated in the case of R against Barnet that the purposive approach should only be taken if the courts can find in the statute read as a whole or in material to which they are permitted by law to refer as aids to interpretation and expression of Parliament's purpose or policy. In the case of Pepper, Inspector of Taxes against Hart, Lord Brown Wilkinson appreciated that the purposive approach to construction now adopted by the courts in order to give effect to the true intentions of the legislature. Lord Griffiths also supported this view and stated that the days have long passed when the courts adopted a strict constructionist view of interpretation which required them to adopt the literal meaning of the language. The courts now adopt a purposive approach which seek to give effect to the true purpose of legislation and are prepared to look at much extraneous material that bears upon the background against which the legislation was enacted. Back in 1969, the Law Commission report had also proposed for the UK courts to adopt a purposive approach. In practice, we will see that this approach will still be undertaken by the UK judges in interpreting the parliamentary enactments. While we are discussing this purpose of approach, and as just at the start of this lecture we discussed that this has overtaken to some extent the mischief rule, there is a difference still between purpose of approach and the mischief rule. We are going to understand the difference between mischief rule and purpose of approach by this diagram. As you can see, the mischief rule goes back to look at the background of the legislation, what was the intention of the legislature in the past. On the other hand, when we look at purposive approach, this looks towards the aims which are to be achieved in future, and this has been borrowed from the European Union law. As we learned, purposive approach has become far wider than the mischief rule. Purposive approach looks at the purpose and the social impacts of the legislation. The mischief rule supposes that the intent of the legislature in passing any enactment was to remedy a certain mischief. And then this goes back to the past. And look at the background. If you want to refresh 
your understanding of mischief rule or perhaps if approach please go back to the lecture of the rules of construction in the next lecture we will learn about the ec legislation in the context of statutory interpretation